Welcome to day two of our Teen Purity Challenge for parents. Today, our team is Discover Anti Purity Habits. Now, a wise saying goes thus it says, We first make our habits, then our habits make us. Because we are a product of what we repeatedly do. If your child is going on this purity um, journey, remember that it is a process. And so it's a total sum of all their actions and inactions daily. Whatever they do or don't do will tell on how they will fare along the way. Just like when on a road journey, you decide to eat everything sold by the road. <laughs> and then before you know what is happening, your tummy is running and then you're having you know, tummy upset or you're feeling ill. That's the same thing. As they go on this journey, what happens along the way will tell how healthy they will become sexually. That, that's what I mean. The transfer century teenager is faced with a lot of pressure. Let's admit that. We must accept it and help them rather than put out our high, unachievable, sometimes unachievable expectations on them. Many times these expectations are not real. They are not a reality. Also, remember that a time will come when the decision, the sole decision to live a life of purity is totally up to your children, totally up to them. And you must, be, you must accept that fact so that you can be at peace with yourself. I know of a, a parent, very solid, you know, woman of God. Her daughter got pregnant and she left, you know, she left her community, she relocated and all that. There is no need for that if you ask me because this child, you have done your best. That's why, you, for example, you're in this challenge, you're doing your best to learn everything you can. Just begin to understand that eventually it's that decision of whether to do a life of purity is left to your child but for now do what you can do all you can to prepare them to be able to go on this journey themselves one of the tools that you can hand over to them is anti-purity habits you know when you're teaching purity you don't just come and say things like if you if you you know if, if you sleep with someone or if you do this thing you will be pregnant you have an std you know you would you, you would you start losing your mind, you can't concentrate and all that. No, that's not enough. You need to you need to equip them with tools, things that they can hold on to, traps that they can recognize and run away from. That is what the purity um, habits is all about. Now, anti-purity habits are traps, stoppers, bumpers, you know, things that stop them and try to hinder them. Um, threaten their purity lifestyle. Here are some of them. Very interesting, by the way. Number one, alcohol and other substances. I remember some time ago, I was having a chat with my, I had some teenagers, my own teenager and then some of my mentees. I had them around in the house and we were just talking about something else and then the issue of alcohol came up. And I was so shocked that my daughter now said, oh, I've tasted alcohol before. I don't take alcohol. My husband doesn't, you can't find alcohol in our house. And she just said it, oh, I've taken alcohol before. Um, one of the neighbors, <laughs> one of the neighbors had brought alcohol and given to all the teenagers in the house, in the, in the community. So most of them, and meanwhile, this, um, this place where I lived at that time had pastors, had pastors' children, had, you know, <laughs> people that you would not expect that their children would have done this. So sometimes these things are happening. And you know, I had not yet had the alcohol discussion with her. I thank God that it didn't go down well. She was like, I don't even know why people like it. It's bitter, it's this and all that. What if she liked it? What if I had not yet, because I still felt she was too young. You know, when your children are pre you're still looking at them like, oh no, I tasted alcohol when I was 18. And then, these days we have eight years, nine years, 10 years, playing those pranks. They even sell alcohol in small sachets. And sometimes their friends bring it to school. So the earlier you begin to have the discussion with your children, the better. Now, this is not a case of whether your religion accepts it or not. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is the fact that um, is it useful, is it harmful? That's where the discussion should go. 
The reason why alcohol or other substances are threats to purity is because it, 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 the intake of it makes them tipsy, drowsy, and not in full control of their senses and behavior. So, um, most times, when they take these things, knowingly or unknowingly, these things do not allow them to, to say no or to even recognize when their purity is being threatened. So, um, last year, a psychiatric doctor who happens to be my friend shared a story with me because of the work. He knows I do this work with teenagers and he said to me that he was called upon by a young man somewhere you know, in town, the city where I live, Abuja, to come to a hotel. What had happened? They had gone out for a party and these guys, drugged, the guy drugged his girlfriend he gave, he gave her alcohol, she took the alcohol, of course, young girl, maybe never taken before, maybe not so used to it, and the alcohol knocked her off. And from there, of course, the drug, there was, there was some drugs in it, and then she was unconscious for this. Well, they, they also took those substances, but they, they recovered faster. She was still drowsy, knocked out, they had sex, they did all that, and the girl was still not herself. They had to call him as a psychiatric doctor to bring some kind of medication to bring her back. They couldn't even take her back home. So they took her from the from the party venue to the hotel to try to revive her until he got there. So that's how risky, that's how risky it is for them when they take this. Because you don't even know how how your body or how your system will react to alcohol or this or these um, substances. In, in teaching alcohol, if you need to bring the alcohol, yes, yeah, this is one of the parts where I need you to have a mind shift. If you need to bring the alcohol physically, I know you're a man of God. I know you're a man of God with plenty of anointing, but we're talking about your children's lives and future. Yeah? You need to bring the alcohol physically and say to them, my children, this is alcohol. There's nothing in it. Taste it. Everybody. If you can't do it, get a family relate, you know, relative or a close friend who doesn't mind doing it for you, but you know, let it be a casual thing to say, there is nothing in this thing. So that when your friends come and start telling you how wonderful and heavenly alcohol is, your children are not feeling like, oh, I want to try it and all that. Then they taste it to say, there's nothing in this thing. Okay. Um, then for the issue of um, drugs, that is a bit more technical. So like what I do, I work with some drug use counselors. We bring them when we have our programs and they talk to the teenagers directly. They know the details to give. You might want to engage the services of such or take advantage of when we have team programs, when there are team programs around you, around your community. Don't say things like, no, I don't want to expose them. I don't want them to hear about these things. They'll be curious. No, they are rather curious when they, when they are ignorant. Knowledge kills curiosity to a very large extent. So. Make sure that these people come and talk about the types of drugs, the effects it has, the, um, the fact about the drugs, the myths. Sometimes they tell you things like, when you take these drugs, you, you'll be very intelligent, you'll be able to read for long, you know, and all that, but it has other effects. So let them also, let your children hear these things. Let them hear, do you know that there are some drugs that are very sweet now? When they go for their parties, that's what they serve them with. As they're coming in, they serve it in cups, it looks like juice. Just like a little something to welcome you. And your children are like, oh, this is not alcohol, it's sweet, it's like juice. No, there are drugs in it. How would you know if someone doesn't tell you? How would they know if they are not true? So I don't want our children to be ignorant, to be naive, gullible. They just believe everything and anything. All in the name of what are trying to protect them. When I tell them what, they are going to find out. That is a fact. Okay, so let's move on. Um, the next thing that we want, the next antiquity habit is sexting. Yes, in our time, we're not even like sexting, but now it's everywhere. Sexting is the act of sending sexually explicit messages, photos, videos via cell phone, computer, or any other digital advice. Sexting includes photos and videos that contain nudity or, or um, showing stimulated sex acts. It could also include text messages that discuss or propose sex acts. Sexing is often done as a joke. You are not joking. Ah, can't you just send me? You know, you know, it's also a way of trying to get attention or just flirt. Most girls have cited pressure from boys as the reasons to participate in sexting. 
parents, this is the time for you to begin to discuss this issue if you haven't already. Let your children understand the risk, you know, and what to do if or when they feel pressured to participate, you know, in sexting. Discuss with them, either as the caller for sexting or the complier, either the boy or the girl. So both ways, your son should also not pressurize girls to do sexting. One major risk of sexting is um, the fact that there's the viral phenomenon. It can go viral in seconds. Another issue with it is that it could lead to bullying, harassment, and humiliation that cause emotional and social consequences for your child. This is sometimes what leads to depression, to suicide, or to suicide attempts. Last year, I got a report of um, how some boys used this sexting tool to to masturbate. So they tell the girls, oh, twerk, dance, and send it to me, then they'll be masturbating where they are. Really dirty, crazy things that are going on out there through this gadget that our children have. Let them know. Like I always say, no one is permitted to see your nakedness, not even your phone. It's your phone. Your phone, your phone camera is not permitted to see your nakedness. The next thing is porn. Porn is a terrible anti- purity habit the major source of porn is through movies and websites most times it's circulated amongst peers in school church and in the neighborhood other times it's unsolicited for it is shown and shared via whatsapp groups whatsapp status sometimes even on whatsapp status without your child going anywhere somebody just decides that his own assignment is to play porn movie through his status he just he just playing it continuously from one to the other, that is his assignment, to feed your child with this content. So, we must be very careful. Another um, way it is shown is on social media. Terrible things that we see out there, without you saying yes, it's just shown to you, it's shown to your child. Now, the challenge with porn is that it leads to more porn. And then a bigger challenge is that it progresses, or should I say, it degenerates. I heard a very scary story. Now, I wasn't told this story. I heard it from the horse's mouth. A young man shared how at around the age 13 or 14, he was introduced to porn from his neighbor. Because some of us will say, no, my children don't go out there, they don't go to parties, they don't go to... In the neighborhood, I mean, you cannot keep them in your house for 24 hours a day for the whole year. So he just stepped out to his neighbor's house and he got introduced to porn. That was not the problem. From porn, he graduated to masturbation. From masturbation, he began to have sex at a very tender age. Now, from having sex, he started having sex with harlots. He had to go and start paying to have sex with them. Then, from there, he was now introduced to sex, homosexual sex. It was a crazy thing. By the time this guy was in his 20s and 30s, he was almost a damaged young man. Thank God for rescuing him. Right now, he's out there trying to rescue young people. But it was a terrible experience. And that is why we must... I personally, I see porn as an arch enemy. If I see the devil and I see porn, maybe I'll keep porn first before I fight the devil. So, porn is really terrible. Because, you know, you know when the devil is coming, but porn is easy. Since phones came, since gadgets came, your child is just staying beside you, but your child has gone far because porn is, is very easy to assess. In our days, you have to go out to get porn, but now, without you saying yes or no, porn is on your face. So we need to make sure that we have our teaching and monitoring skills up. In my book, Maintain Your White, I actually named porn as one of the three masquerades that confront our children and what they can do to break free from it. I need you to check page 97 and you would see that um, that content there. Now, the fourth anti-purity habit is vulgar content. This is where we make explicit and offensive reference to, soft, to sex or bodily functions. The main aim of vulgar content is to cause stimulation or arousal. Ar arousal. Vulgar content is seen in materials like books, music, music videos, songs, and all that. Our teens must be very careful what they allow through their ear gates. Remember, we're talking about purity. Purity is not just a sexual act. 
staying away from it. It is also guarding your ears, your mind, your eyes. Now, this is one of the reasons why our teenagers fall into sex jobs. If they are aware and conscious and intentional about what they allow to come in, then they'll, they'll, be, they'll be doing themselves a lot of good. They must learn to frown at whatever it is that is not pretty compliant, wherever they find themselves. I remember um, the salon I used to use for my daughter some time back because we have been having this discussion about you know, vulgar content and the lyrics of music. She complained to me and said, Mommy, why is it that they keep playing this kind of music? You know how you go to a salon and all that they are singing is sexy, the sexy, the, and I'm like, what is the problem? I faced the same challenge in the gym I used to use sometime last year. I will be doing my exercise and I get distracted. I'm very conscious about it. What I hear, what I see, I don't joke. And I have to cry out to the gym head and say, if you don't stop playing this kind of music, I will stop coming here. And she says, no, oh, no, I'm just playing it for the beat. And I'm like, is this the only beat? Must I wake up in the morning and the first thing I'm hearing is the F word, the S word? What is the problem? So let our children be very cautious so that they don't just relax. And then by the time you finish listening to this music, there's a way your body feels. Remember, they are at a time when these hormones are already dead. So let's help them not trigger it or worsen you know how sexual they feel okay so let's move to the next one parties oh i love this one the parties and clubs you know our teenagers are at a time and a stage of their lives when they crave for these things it doesn't matter if you're a pastor if you're pastor's children it doesn't matter if they are leaders children no, no 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 those things don't matter those things don't really change anything Rather than you, um, you know, demonizing these things, rather than you judging, criticizing, lecturing, and you know, trying to make them feel really terrible for expressing their desire to experience these things, can you just find a way to guide them? I remember one time a pastor's daughter, I put it on Facebook, where a pastor's daughter asked, the pastor was asking that my daughter is requesting to go to a club. What do I do? We saying all kinds of things. Call her, talk to her, do this, tell her it's bad. Do, 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 do. But a few people, you know, said what is right. Take her there or get someone to take her. And they let her see that there's really nothing here. Sometimes when they go there and they even hear the, the sound of the music, you know, the volume of the sound, and then the way people are smoking and all that, they will not want to go there again. But when you keep saying, no, no, you can't, you must not, then they will find a way to do it behind your back. Remember, you are there to guide. Yes, if you are a spirit coco like me, if you are a spirit coco like me, and you are now blessed, the Lord now blesses you with your opposite. Where you have teenagers that are the life of the party, the life to bubble and shuffle, you would have to be strategic. Yes, you would have to be very strategic. Get someone that you can trust, a family member or a friend, to go with them to these parties, to go with them to this club once or twice. Let them just go there and check. When they see that you're letting, that you even agree to let them go, sometimes they desire to go goes. But when you say no, never, ever, personally, I never went to any party. That kind of party. I never went to those kind of parties. Let me say, I never went to a club or to clubs. No, I never. But that does not mean I will not put a standing rule that my children must never, can never, will never. I've told them what the disadvantages are. If they insist on going, there is a rule I already have on <laughs> your, let me call it a guideline. Guidelines for going to parties. I will share with you shortly. Just hold on. Now, um, like I said, sometimes when they go, they get discouraged about going again because they didn't like the experience. But before going, they just feel like, oh, there's something they are missing out by not going. So one thing I always try to emphasize is that um, going to parties, my concern majorly about it is not I don't want you to have fun. My concern is the fact that it, it, it's an opportunity for teenagers to get raped. It's an opportunity for them to enter the sex mood because of the kind of music and stuff that goes on. The place is dark, everywhere is very cozy and all that. Um, and then they can be caressed, touched, whether they want or not. And then it could also introduce them to practice bling sex where they need to just have sex quickly, quickly because the time is short. Or bleak drinking, drinking rather. Then it could also encourage other risky sexual behavior. So. 
However, however, not all parties are actually bad. Like I said, I have a guide <laughs> I want to share with you. I call it the party checklist. Where, when you want to go to a party, we have to agree and consider the following things. There are seven of them. Number one, who are the organizers of the party? Number two, what are their age range? What's the age range? Are they teenagers like you? Are they youth? Are they much older people? Then, who are the people? What are the age, age range also of people that will be coming? Very important. The time and duration of the party. Some parties will end by 10. Some parties is still mama call, still day breaking. Is that the kind of party you want to go? Then what kind of things will be served there? You should know, you should have an idea. Is it drinks, is it food, is it drugs? Some parties will tell you that drugs will be served. And then sometimes you have to, you know, make the, um, you have to make the investigation to find out what will be served there. Then you also have things like what kind of activity? I saw the poster of a party from one of my teenagers that said, I saw it on her status and I was like, wow, you want to go for this party? The party stated that there will be strip dancers. Then there was this other one my daughter told me about, which my husband and I keep using to tease her. The party was titled um, Glow in the Dark. So everywhere will be dark, and the only thing that will glow is either a material from your shirt, your watch, your hand, or some kind of splash on your body. And I'm like, how do you go for a party where everywhere will be dark? Don't you know the kind of things that will happen there? So those are the two, that, that tells you that that party is a highly risky one. Not like you can't go, but it is risky. Then you now have, um, how would you go to the party and how would you return from the party? This is very important because um, many times when plans are not properly made, your child is now stuck with a group of boys or girls that are wild. Maybe they have taken something and they are tips and are now the ones that have to go and drop them because you didn't make provision for them. So how they will go, how they will return especially. I know of a family friend that went for a party years back and he had an accident and he was in hospital for months. Of course, you know, after parties, they are high and all that. So it's very important to consider all these things. Then you have them, um, who knows that you will be at the party? Who knows? This is very key for me. My children know. Wherever you are on the face of this, and even if you're in Australia, Canada, wherever, you must not be the only one to know you're going for a party. If you don't want, if you don't want your parents to know, your trusted adult, your love number, which is your like your mentor, your coach, somebody, somebody senior to you must know. We don't practice, we practice a no secrecy policy when it comes to movement. Yeah, it's one of my family values, and I wanted to act. To, to, to also adopt it if you don't already have it. Secrecy as per movement is a no-no. No matter where you are going, I don't want unpleasant surprises. I don't want someone calling me and saying, I just saw your daughter in Lagos Airport, I'll say I know. Yeah. And if I don't know, I'm like, okay, really, let me get back to you. I should be able to call a certain number that we have already agreed. Mommy, this is who I'll be reporting to. This is my accountability partner when it comes to my movement. If you call anti this, anti that, she knows I am here. He knows I am here. We have agreed on that and everybody's fine. So when you go through this party checklist, then you, your child by herself or himself will know do I really want to go for this party or not? Or they will check it before they come and even consider attending that party. Please note, whether your children love to go for parties or not is not, a, is not what is going to determine whether they are good whether they are well behaved, whether they are spiritual, it's just a matter of interest. Some children naturally don't just like that noise and they are more introverted. That doesn't mean that they are better than, excuse me, than the ones that are out there. No, it doesn't mean. It has nothing to do with it. Just accept the peculiarity of your child's personality. Very important. So, our challenge for today is very simple. Have the anti-purity habit conversation with your preteens and your teens today. Remember not to take over the conversation, just start it. Now, here are some simple conversation starters to begin with. Let me use um, sexting as a case study, but you can also use it for alcohol, parties, and for other risky habits. So you can say something like, can we talk about the kind of things that you and your friends like to share online or with each other? What are the things you can share with each other? I want, I want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and looking out for your friends as well. 
so you can hear things like oh they share videos they share comedy or they share sometimes they ask me to share a picture of myself dancing sometimes they ask me to share a picture of myself there was a boy that asked a girl take a new picture of yourself and she said she was wondering so she took he said take off your shirt take the picture she did it and she said take the complete one she said no i can't take the complete one <laughs> so have that discussion then you say you, you can also say something like have you heard about sexting have you heard about break drinking have you heard about um you know whatever it is what happened um, dancing in the club whatever it is you want to talk about just ask them what do you know about it because i've heard some things and all that you can say i've been watching tv i saw news the other day google news i saw this story about some children getting into trouble and um, i was just wondering that ah, I hope my child is not also at risk, and then they will not start sharing. Sometimes they will not, they will not accept that it's themselves. They say something like, "Oh, my friend did this, my friend did that." Be him or her, but it's okay as long as they are being, um, they, are, they are learning and they are able to open up to you. I think it's a win-win for you. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed today's challenge. I hope you have. See you tomorrow.